In this video, we are going to explore how we can approach the eight mark source question that appears in paper two of the Higher Politics exam. Paper two is made up of two types of source question. The eight mark source question, which is text-based and requires comparative analysis. The second source question is worth 20 marks and requires data handling skills. A separate video lesson is devoted to this source skill. Neither of the source questions require background knowledge and may include aspects of the course content that you have not covered or choose not to revise for the final exam. The time allocated to paper 2 in the final exam is 1 hour and 15 minutes. This means that the 8 mark source question should take around 21 minutes to complete under exam conditions. Let us now turn our attention to this source question from the 2017 past paper, which you can access on the SQA website or from the link that's been shared with you. The SQA requires that candidates demonstrate that they can make accurate comparisons and draw valid conclusions. So much like when we write analytical comments in the 12 and 20 mark essay responses, we will need to do the same thing here. You will remember that analytical comments may involve identifying areas of difference, identifying areas of similarity, making evaluative comments on the extent of these differences and similarities, and commenting on the consequences of these differences and similarities. It is worth bearing this in mind as we read the information in the sources. So let us turn to the question first. The question asks us to compare the cases for direct and representative democracy. It also tells us that we must identify three points of comparison. We should think about themes, aspects or features when we are trying to identify these three points of comparison. The final instruction given in the question is to reach an overall conclusion about what we have read about direct and representative democracy. It may be tempting to add in our own knowledge here, but since this will not be credited, this is not advisable. Let's begin by reading the first paragraph in source A, which presents the case for direct democracy. As you listen to me read it, or read along yourself, try to think of one word that sums up what the paragraph is referring to. Direct democracy is when citizens are expected to fully take part in the political process and take the decisions that affect their lives and the lives of people in their country or state. Direct democracy works best in small communities. The most reference is in ancient Greece and in the city of Athens, although more recently the small cantons of Switzerland have allowed their citizens to regularly take part in direct democracy. In addition, it is used in a number of states in the USA. In some of these states, the members of local communities are given a direct say over key decisions, whereas in others, such as California, voters have opportunities to directly make decisions through the frequent use of referenda. As a result, direct democracy is seen as being practical at local level. For me, the word that sums up what that paragraph is about is practicality. So I am now going to annotate this first paragraph with that word. This paragraph also refers to participation, so I'm also going to annotate the paragraph with that word. And now for the second paragraph. Where direct democracy is used, it is argued that it creates a more informed electorate and politically knowledgeable group of citizens. This can be seen in the recent Scottish referendum on independence. The Scottish electorate were keen to participate and a Guardian editorial piece claimed that the electorate were the most informed at any election in the UK since the Second World War. This interest in direct democracy has been seen before in other referenda, such as the vote to separate Quebec from the rest of Canada and the vote for independence in Slovenia where 93.3% of the electorate voted. A word that sums up this paragraph would be information. So I will now annotate the second paragraph with the word information. And now for the final paragraph. Using direct democracy ensures that all decisions made are legitimate due to the direct participation of citizens. Consequently, the decisions are likely to be accepted as fair. Those who made the decisions are the same people who are affected by them. The outcome will be accepted and potential disputes or civil unrest will be avoided. This was the case in the 2011 UK alternative vote referendum, where 67% of the UK voted not to change the electoral system. As a result, the issue was settled and the Liberal Democrat and Conservative coalition remained intact until the next election in 2015. The word that sums up this paragraph would be legitimacy. 
and so I will annotate the final paragraph with the word legitimacy. So now I'm going to create a colour-coded key on the page. This will help me with the comparison element of the question. As you can see, there are four aspects discussed in source A. I have decided to leave out participation. The question only requires three points of comparison, and so I'm going to go with practicality, information and legitimacy. So if I now go back to paragraph one, I want to find a good point within it that presents the case or promotes the idea of direct democracy in terms of practicality. I would highlight in the colour that I have assigned to the word practicality, which is pink, direct democracy is seen as being practical at a local level. And I would also highlight the examples presented in this paragraph, which add weight to this argument, so that that would be ancient Athens and the small cantons of Switzerland. I would then switch colours to the colour I assigned to the word information, which is yellow, and then select the words the electorate were the most informed at any election. I will then select an example provided um, to strengthen this case. I will choose the Scottish referendum on independence. Switching now to the final colour that I have assigned to the theme of legitimacy, that is blue. I will select the decisions are likely to be accepted as fair, those who made the decisions are the same people who are affected by them, and the outcome will be accepted and potential disputes or civil unrest will be avoided. While this feels like a laborious process, this is where the bulk of the 21 marks should be spent, so that your written response is coherent and focused. Let us now turn our attention to source B, which presents the case for representative democracy. We will follow the same steps as we did with source A, reading and identifying themes. So let's turn our attention to paragraph one. Representative democracy is a limited and indirect form of democracy. Popular participation in government is infrequent and brief. Most commonly, participation is through voting in elections. This is how the electorate choose their representatives. The public do not exercise power themselves. They select who will govern on their behalf. So I think that participation would work here as a theme to sum up this paragraph. I will note this next to the paragraph. And now on to paragraph two. Using a representative democratic system has many advantages. This includes adding legitimacy to the decision-making process. The decisions that are made by governments usually have a mandate given to the government through democratic elections. Voters legitimise the decisions made by representatives and if the people do not like the decisions that are being made, then they can vote the party out at the next election. This mandate was clear in 2011 when the SNP won a majority government in the Scottish Parliament. The people had given them a mandate to hold a referendum on independence. The word that I would use here to describe this paragraph would be legitimacy. And now to paragraph three. A positive division of labour is created when using a representative democracy. The electorate do not have to get bogged down in the intricate details of each piece of legislation. Most of the general public have no interest in spending time researching policy. Many would not have the knowledge, time or capability to research complex issues. The elected representative acts on their behalf and votes on issues in Parliament in the way that they believe their electors would want. This allows a better quality of legislation to be passed as it has been through adequate research, drafting and scrutiny processes by professional politicians. And the word I would use here to sum up what that paragraph was about would be information. So I will go ahead and annotate the paragraph with that word. And finally, in the majority of modern democratic countries, regular direct democracy is not only seen as undesirable by many, but seen as impossible by others. The size of countries today limits the effectiveness of direct democracy. Even a small country like Malta could not effectively run its affairs using direct democracy. It would take too long to make any decisions. As a result, representative democracy is seen as the best system of government for today's countries, as their size makes this the most desirable system. Using representative democracy ensures that legislation can be made and passed effectively and practically in modern society. And the word I would use here to describe the final paragraph would be practicality. So I'll go ahead and annotate that paragraph with that word. We can now see that there are four distinct themes, aspects or features of comparison between representative and direct democracy. We only need three points of comparison, so we're going to pick information, legitimacy and practicality. 
In the Higher Politics course report in 2019, the principal assessor said that when candidates try to compare unrelated information, they gain no marks and therefore this is best avoided by finding points of comparison. Because we're not comparing participation in these sources, we move straight on to paragraph 2 of source B. I would select my colour for legitimacy, which is blue, and highlight the following. Voters legitimise the decisions made by representatives and if the people do not like the decisions that are being made, then they can vote the party out at the next election. This mandate was clear in 2011 when the SNP won a majority government in the Scottish Parliament. The people had given them a mandate to hold a referendum on independence. Paragraph 3 is next, so we need to select the colour that we have used for information, which is yellow, and highlight... Most of the general public have no interest in spending time researching policy. Many would not have the knowledge, time or capability to research complex issues. The elected representative acts on their behalf and votes on issues in Parliament in the way that they believe their electors would want. This allows a better quality of legislation to be passed as it has been through adequate research, drafting and scrutiny processes by professional politicians. And now to the final paragraph where we're looking for detail about practicality. So we're going to take the colour for practicality, which is pink, and highlight the following. Representative democracy is seen as the best system of government for today's countries as their size makes this the most desirable system. Using representative democracy ensures that legislation can be made and passed effectively and practically in modern society. Our next step is to draw connecting lines between each of the points of comparison. We will tackle the overall conclusion at the end of the process. Next, we need to construct our written response, and the following technique will help you to focus on the requirements of the question. So our first step is that we need to identify the theme of comparison. That is the word that we've used to identify the main theme of each paragraph. Then we need to select evidence from source A and then source B that reflect this theme. These were the points that we've already highlighted. And finally, we need to analyse what this evidence tells us about direct democracy and representative democracy in terms of their effectiveness as forms of democracy. We need to follow this structure three times for each point of comparison. We could use the mnemonic TABA, T-A-B-A, to help us remember this structure, where T stands for theme, A stands for source A, B stands for source B, and A stands for analysis. So let's begin constructing the answer. One comparison that can be made about direct and representative democracy relates to the theme of practicality. Source A states that direct democracy is seen as being practical at a local level and was used in ancient Athens and used currently in the Swiss cantons. Source B states that representative democracy is the best form of democracy for countries with larger populations and that this form of democracy works more effectively and practically in modern society. This shows that direct democracy is practical on a local level or on a small scale, whereas representative democracy is the most practical and effective system of government in modern, complex societies. And now moving on to our second point of comparison. A second comparison that can be made about direct and representative democracy relates to the theme of legitimacy. Source A states that because all citizens can make political decisions by expressing their views, decisions are likely to be accepted as fair and people will accept the results without disputes. Source B states that voters legitimise the decisions made by representatives and if the people do not like the decisions that are being made, then they can vote the party out at the next election. This shows that direct democracy can be seen as more legitimate given the direct engagement that the people have in the political decision-making process, whereas in a representative democracy the people do not have the same level of engagement which may reduce the legitimacy of the decisions made as the people must rely on the representatives elected to act on their behalf and represent their views. A third comparison that can be made about direct and representative democracy relates to the theme of information. Source A states that direct democracy creates a more informed electorate and politically knowledgeable group of citizens, and this was the case in the Scottish independence referendum. Source B states that the majority of the electorate have no interest in researching information relating to policy and other complex issues, and so representative democracy allows professional politicians to undertake this scrutiny of information on behalf of the people. This shows that direct democracies can offer the people the opportunity to inform themselves about important issues and then vote based on this information. 
However, representative democracy takes this out of the hands of the people, and this can be more effective as politicians are able to undertake research into the information in a way that the average citizen may not wish to or have the time to do. And now to end, we need to look at the overall conclusion. This is worth two marks. The following would be awarded two out of two marks. Overall, the case for representative democracy is stronger. Representative democracy creates higher quality legislation due to expert politicians, is more practical for today's large countries, and offers legitimacy through regular elections. This makes it a better system to use than direct democracy.